Last year, I elected to analyze the piss-poor showing during the 2011 edition of the Electronic Entertainment Expo, albeit only the first two days, as that's when the vast majority of the so-called noteworthy announcements are divulged to begin with. After which, the gale force winds of the modern shovelware shitstorm blew the roof clean off the fucking place. Judging from the ceaseless influx of comments and messages over the past week, you've noticed I defer from making that a tradition this year, and really, there's just one reason why that is. Because frankly, in my opinion, the last two years of E3 haven't been worth casually urinating on while staggering through an inebriated stupor. Not that Keith Apicary won't give it the old college try, assuming they even let that magnificent bastard attend this year. I mentioned it briefly on Twitter, but as unyieldingly, mind-bendingly, reality-shatteringly horrendous as E3 2011 was, it's my humble contention now that E3 2012 was significantly fucking worse. And that's saying something, because my expectations this year couldn't have been any more bafflingly low without being mistaken for Monday Night Raw's ratings. So day one kicks off the festivities with all the enthusiasm of a school bus fire. Folks, this year Microsoft itself red ringed. They open up with a trailer for Halo 4, and honestly, this was probably the lone bright spot during the entire corporate colonoscopy we were all subjected to. Let me go on record and say I don't hate Halo. It doesn't cure hemorrhoids for me, but given a choice between a surprisingly well-fleshed-out sci-fi shooter and Call of Duty Black Ops with a Mad Max skin on top, I'll be rocking some Halo before you can say, Ramirez, drop that Megazord armed with only a Bowie knife. It's not a peerless work of art by any stretch of Cortana's womb, but it also isn't trying to be. It's just a fun, passable popcorn shooter, and to me it looks like Halo 4 is continuing in that tradition, so color me marginally fucking interested. But then Owen Wilson's slightly less suicidal brother Don Matrick takes the stage and announces the completely superfluous and unverified statistic that not only is Xbox the number one console in America, it's now the number one selling system worldwide. I have no idea how he made that arbitrary determination, and somehow I get the feeling the phrase number one is being used here roughly in the same context as it might be in an elementary school bathroom stall. But alas, then it was time for Splinter Cell Blacklist. May I advance the radical concept that Ubisoft shouldn't have a press conference at all? To me, Ubisoft are, and always will be, pretenders to the AAA developer throne, really. God help them, they wish they were Electronic Arts, but they do not have the Electronic Arts fucking sales numbers, and frankly, their loftiest achievements as a developer were from before they made their mad dash for relevance in 2007. It's been a nice experiment, Ubisoft, but it's time to be a good little French-Canadian, dust off the fucking white flag and pack it in, because the shareholders have officially invaded the Rhineland. So day two saw Sony bore the audience into borderline and sensate catatonia, but perhaps the most overtly obnoxious announcement came in the form of the unveiling of Quantic Dream's vaunted follow-up to Heavy Rain, and its name is Beyond Two Souls, yes fellow rageaholics. After a decade of cock-teasing and David Cage's repeated insistence that we would at long last receive a long overdue follow-up to Omicron the Nomad Soul, what we ultimately received, no doubt as a result of corporate pressure from first-party Sony, is heavy rain with a watered-down version of Omicron's possession system stapled onto it. Well, motherfucking done, Sony. David Cage couldn't backpedal any harder without becoming his own hairline. I hereby dub the crown prince of all trolls, because somewhere in France there's a bridge that's completely overrun by motherfucking billy goats. And what is your obsession with clipped-haired man-faced boy-girls exactly, David Cage? That French broad from Heavy Rain had more chin than dialogue, and now Ellen Page and Ellen Page's unkempt Canadian eyebrows are added to the fucking payroll? The justification, you ask? Well, they needed someone with the emotive capacity of a fucking dishwasher to properly convey the two emotions she'll need to express in between chase scenes. Does the PS3 even have the processing power to render that asexual midget's concave personality and three fucking dimensions, and may the nine divines watch over the fucking five people on the planet that actually own 3D television sets. At any rate, <laughs> I can't wait to do a movie review of this. Uh, Nintendo, meanwhile, won the show purely by virtue of the fact that neither Usher nor Ellen Page's faux-bemused hipster scowl were in, in attendance. Fucking, sure, they didn't announce anything of genuine consequence in my opinion, but given a choice between bad announcements and no announcements, 
I, call me regressive, but I'm firmly on board with the latter. I don't want to live in a world where this year's E3 is viewed with anything aside from immeasurable disdain by any sentient life form currently inhabiting the troposphere. If you have a problem with anything postulated within the confines of this video, may I recommend a diet high in my chundering dick. I'm Razorfist. God fucking speed.